Hi everyone, this is Salaboy here and I will do a quick introduction about the Activity Cloud uh, project and what's the main purpose for the project, what are the main building blocks and why we chosen the technology stack that we are using. Okay, so during this presentation I will be talking a little bit about what the project is about, what are we doing and what's our main focus. I will also talk a little bit about cloud native applications and the big padding shift that's happening in our, in our industry. I will also talk a little bit about why we uh, dis uh, decided to go full on Kubernetes as our main deployment infrastructure and why we chose that for our you know, production grade deployments. We uh, also need to discuss a little bit about what we have defined as uh, activity cloud infrastructure and the main set of uh, app services that you will find in there. And then we will jump into how our cloud native building blocks use this infrastructure in order to scale and to be smarter and to understand what's the context uh, that they are operating in. At the end of this presentation, I will just give you a set of uh, references and links where you can go uh, to find more details about these things and how, also how you can get in touch to be a community contributor. Okay, so a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Mauricio Salatino. I'm also known as Salaboy in the community. I've been working with uh, process engines and rule engines and decision models and, you know, and process models for the last 10 years. Uh, I've been also involved with several open source projects and I'm currently leading the Activity and Activity Cloud open source initiatives. We come from Activity, which was designed as a process engine before cloud providers even were there. So we are making sure that we are moving some of the concepts provided by the VPM discipline and, you know, and, and decisions disciplines and decision models into cloud environments. So we are focusing a little bit more uh, on the business automation side that only on process automation. We wanted to make sure that whatever we build is a set of comprehensive building blocks that you can start using right away when you start looking into these new uh, cloud infrastructures. Again, because there is a lot of new things going out, uh, we want to make sure that we collaborate with these other communities in order to provide the most efficient solution. So we can use, start using right away using the things that you already know without us reinventing things that are going to be provided by these, you know, cloud providers. Uh, we wanted to integrate with, you know, well-known tools and we wanted to follow well-known procedures and approaches to software development. So we are joining some other communities and following their approaches in order to do our job. So it feels really natural for your developers and your users. And again, our focus is not to reinvent anything. So we are spending a lot of time interacting with these other groups with other projects and we wanted to make sure that we join forces in order to provide the best of the breed of services for business automation in the cloud. When we start talking about cloud native applications we need to be specifically clear about what we are doing and why we are making some decisions and how we are building our building blocks. In order to do that we need to make sure that we follow common practices that are being followed by the industry and you know we have uh, we don't need to invent anything around that we just need to follow what people is doing and what other projects are suggesting and some other well-known techniques for distributed architectures it's very important for everyone to understand that when you start using docker and docker looks like the right tool to use for building these kind of applications and for distributed environments uh, you need to understand that Docker is not enough. I mean, by just packaging your old application inside a Docker container, you are not going to solve too many problems. If that application was a monolith and it starts failing, the whole thing will fail. Using Docker alone, it's not enough, again, because you need to coordinate a set of Docker containers, and those, that set might grow quite a lot. So you need to make sure that you have your own orchestrators for containers, and for that reason, we have chosen Kubernetes. Uh, in order to know exactly and how to build things for containers, we need to make sure that we understand how cloud native applications should work. And I totally recommend you to take a look at these four books uh, that gives you the theoretical background about why we are choosing some technologies and why we are applying some patterns to our services that previously, you know, we knew about these patterns, but we didn't know about how cloud providers will look like. Nowadays we know, so we can just implement and migrate the concepts that we had in the activity engine into these new cloud native building blocks. We have chosen a Spring Cloud as our main abstraction layer uh, because we don't want to reinvent how to abstract the message queue, how to abstract the service registry. So we want to rely on the abstractions layer that they provide. And in the case that we need to implement a new abstraction layer, we will propose these abstraction layers to these projects instead of building it in our own and just maintaining it in our own. We don't want to reinvent things that are not specifically 
focused on business automation and you have our promise that we will do our best to interact with these other communities in order to build you know the best of the bit of set of services for business automation in the cloud okay so at this point it's really important to understand why we chose kubernetes for our production grade deployment as an, orchest as an orchestrator for our containers and our building blocks and at this point in time it's it's you know it's kind of like the de facto option for people to deploy things on top of this but something that you need to realize if you are looking into kubernetes is that first of all kubernetes is not you know the silver bullet that it will solve all your problems this is very good tool it's a very non-opinionated tool so there are tons of different ways of doing things for kubernetes uh, we have chosen kubernetes because most of the cloud providers are supporting this nowadays so it started all with the google cloud engine running on top of kubernetes they open sourced the, the core of it and red hat openshift also started using kubernetes like three years ago Pivotal PKS, the guys who build Cloud Foundry, they realized that they need to support Kubernetes for the new infrastructure. Amazon was pushed to say that they are going to support Kubernetes now, uh, late last December. Docker is also providing services around Kubernetes, and Microsoft Azure is also uh, providing uh, Kubernetes as a first class citizen for their cloud infrastructure. You have Vietnami as well providing services and providing hosting solutions for that. And there are a lot of tools being built for Kubernetes and we want to make sure as part of the activity and activity cloud project that we build things with these infrastructures in mind. These are very complex infrastructures, these are distributed infrastructures and there are a lot of new problems when you go into those. So we want to make sure that by targeting Kubernetes we uh, collaborate with these other communities and we join forces in order to provide products great building blocks that you can start using right away. As I mentioned before, uh, the infrastructure is really important and understanding what are the main pieces inside this infrastructure will enable our applications to be smarter and to interact with the context in a different way based on the available services. So as part of the activity cloud project, we defined something that we call the basic infrastructure. There are some optional pieces in here, but if you have all these pieces, you should be able to leverage and interact with all the services that are running in your own infrastructure in a cloud native way. Uh, so you can see here that we said, okay, we are going to have a gateway. We are going to have single sign-on for all the services inside of our infrastructure and for our applications. We are going to need identity management to understand, you know, what's your organizational structure, which are your groups, which are your users, and who is enabled to do what. Uh, we will have a service registry and a configuration service that it will allow us to configure all of these services related to applications in a distributed way. We are also using the Elk stack, the Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana in order to monitor what's going on with our services and with our infrastructure. And we use Zipkin for traceability. So all of our building blocks are enabled with these capabilities. And as soon as they find out that the infrastructure provides these stacks, they can just hook into them and then automatically discover by other services. Inside this infrastructure, we will have Activity Cloud applications. And Activity Cloud applications are being built by a set of services that are going to provide some functionality. And this functionality will be very domain specific. This is what you, as an activity adopter or implementer, it's going to use in order to register your domain specific logic and domain specific business models. Runtime bundles, in general, is the main entry point for you to understand. And it's the main block in all this uh, Activity Cloud application infrastructure. So when you look at runtime models, runtime models are going to provide different runtimes for different business models. We will start with processes because we have a process runtime already. Notice that I'm, we are changing a little bit the terminology here from process engine to process runtime because we want to make sure that that runtime is as small as possible and as efficient as possible. And in the future we are going to do some work in making sure that these runtimes are not generic and big and you know imposes a big footprint and or imposes you a uh, some technological and architectural decisions on your infrastructure. So we want to make sure that we keep that runtime as focused as possible. The other key aspect of a runtime bundle is it's an immutable piece, meaning that it will run just an immutable set of process definition. This will allow us to deal with process migrations and data migration in general terms and in the same way that other people is moving data from different uh, microservices to new versions of those services. Uh, the next piece that I would like to talk about is the query service. The query service, it's uh, all about aggregating data and making sure that we, cons we can consume that data in an efficient way. So we might have multiple runtime bundles inside your activity applications, which will be aggregated by the query service. 
So if you have an application or a client outside of the Activity Cloud infrastructure that wants to interact with these runtime bundles and read the information that they are producing, they will just contact the query service in order to get you know, an efficient read mechanism for that. That uh, read mechanism will be, of course, integrated with the notification services, so they can get push notifications to their applications based on the new information that is being generated by these different runtimes. The audit service, it's the normal thing that we have in BPM. We have a service, an audit log, where you can just check what happened and when, and then you can start defining big, uh, KPIs on top of that. Cloud connectors are all about system-to-system -system interactions. So business processes and business interactions in general are very related with these system-to-system -system interactions. So we wanted to make sure that we provide these interactions in, in a separate module so we can deal with these interactions and add SLAs and add error handling as appropriately in a cloud-native approach instead of having everything tied to the process runtime. Uh, these activity cloud applications, uh, one of the key important things and the main reason why we are going cloud native is that we can scale each of these components independently. So if we have a scenario where it requires a lot of reading data, like you know, tons of users interacting with tasks and they need to see what's the state of the task or render huge task list, for that reason we can scale query and have multiple replicas of the same service. If you want to do a lot of processing, if we are going to start a lot of process instances for dealing with, you know, like trading a scenario or like the blueprint that we are building that I'm going to show in a different video, uh, in that case, we can, you can scale our, your runtime bundle to perform better. And that can be scaled independently and by the infrastructure. So you don't need to deal with that, with those topics. Uh, the infrastructure is going to do it for you because this, each of these components is, has been built with that in mind. Regarding our roadmap, I wanted to share with you guys the link where you can find this article and we are updating this every month, basically because we have changed the release cadence of this project. We are producing monthly early access releases that you can grab and start uh, trying out. Uh, this is basically because we are aligning with the Spring Boot and Spring Cloud uh, latest releases and we wanted to make sure that we test that software before releasing our own artifacts on top of that. Uh, so if you take a look at now, uh, we are creating early releases that are based on their 2.0 uh, branches and their snapshots and their milestones. So we are maturing, maturing our stuff on top of their stuff. Uh, we are doing weekly blog posts and we wanted to make sure that we are transparent. We are sharing how many people do we have and how many people is working on that from the community, from Alfresco and how the collaboration is going, what are the new requests for comments that we are creating so people can you know, share feedback about what they think that it's important for the project to, to have. We are also, as I mentioned before, heavily working towards a Vita release uh, by the end of March. We hope to get something uh, out at that point so uh, we can go out to conferences and start getting feedback from the community. We do weekly Asian and American catch-ups uh, with community contributors so we have the opportunity to, to share what we are doing and you know, get feedback from different time zones and make sure that we improve the communication channels. And late, uh, lastly, uh, before I talk a little bit about the blueprint that we are building, we want to make sure that all the things that we do, uh, we do it in a continuous deployment approach. And that's kind of like what we expect to achieve this year, just to make sure that we have an environment that it's running and it pushes us to test our releases against this environment. So we can go through the same pain of our implementation that the implementers that fix up these services and these building blocks are going through in their own implementations. We wanted to make sure that as an open source project that we do that because we have seen so many other projects that because they don't have that, they don't suffer the pain that their users uh, do. So we are looking forward to, to, to provide that in the future. And again, please feel free to contribute and give feedback about these ideas. Distributed architectures are quite complex. Then for that's the main reason why we decided to create to start creating these blueprints. And we started creating just one simple one that it's all about trending topic campaigns, and basically from the marketing perspective. How do we monitor different uh, social media feeds in order to understand what's going on and how we can promote products uh, for different countries and different regions and different languages in a very scalable way. You can quickly create new campaigns for trending topics that are happening right now. So look at my next video, it's all about this example and I will just try to go deeper into the details of how do you implement this with Activity Cloud.
Finally, I wanted to give you a quick set of links uh, and resources that you can check if you want to go deeper into these uh, building blocks and these main concepts. We know that there are a lot of changes. We know that you know distributed infrastructures and architectures are complicated, and there are a lot of moving parts. So it's normal for you to be overwhelmed about the, all the new stuff that we are building. When you start looking into cloud native applications, you will probably go through the same road. And as an open source project, we believe that we can share that experience and you can use that even if you are not interested with activity. For that reason, the next video is going to be about this blueprint about trending topic campaigns for a marketing company. But you can take a look at our gitbook. There is a section about that blueprint. You can take a look about the, the main components, about the more, more technical description about them. You can take a look at my blog, uh, just if you want to be uh, aware of what's going on in the project in every week. And uh, yeah, you can also take a look at the roadmap to see what's coming in the next few months. We are working hard in order to release a Vita version uh, by the end of March. Uh, and uh, this is a great time for you to get involved. And we hope uh, we hope to see you there in the Gita channel if you're interested in, in, in joining the project. So thank you very much for watching and please feel free to reach uh, to any of us and the team is always willing to interact with community members. Thank you very much.